This is the last lesson for lesson 11, 11F, and we're going to be using proportions with percents. So if you haven't seen 11A, B, C, D, E, and you become lost or confused, just click on the description and go back and watch them. A proportion is a statement that shows two ratios are equivalent. We've talked about proportions before. One half is equal to two fourths. What we do is we cross multiply. We say one times four is four and two times two is four. And if we get a four when we cross multiply, we multiply the one times the four and get a four, see? And the two times two and get a four. And if we get the same numerator and denominator, four fourths, which is equal to one, then it's in proportion. It's an equivalent ratio, see? And there are three basic components in a percent problem. There's a base, which is the whole amount, that gets multiplied to a rate, which always has a percentage sign, and it tells us what part of the base it is. And it's going to equal the part, which is piece of the whole or the base. It's going to be a piece of this base, OK? So the base is the whole amount. It's like an original amount, the starting balance or a total amount that you're beginning with. The rate always has a percentage sign and shows the relationship of the part to the base. And then the part is just a piece of that whole or base. So this is just a piece of this, OK? This is the percentage. That's the original amount, that's the percentage, and that's the piece of the original amount, OK? I know it can be confusing, but stick with me and you'll figure this out with me, OK? It says of 50 questions on the test, 2% or 4 were marked wrong. So the 50 is the base. That's the original amount. Our rate is the number that has the percentage sign. And the 4 is the part of this 50. So 4 out of 50 were marked wrong. That means 2% were marked wrong. When we double this to be 100. That would make more sense that four, if this was 100, we double this to be 4%. See? That would mean 8 were marked wrong. See how we can just double every number to get it to be 100? That way it'll make more sense in our head. OK? All right, so in percent problems, one of these three components is, will be missing. So we've got this base, this rate, and this part. In a percent problem, one of those three is going to be missing. We find the missing number by setting up a proportion with the base, the rate, and the part. So it's going to look like this, and you're going to want to make note of this. You're going to want to write this somewhere in your uh, notes or your spiral because this is how you solve a percent problem. You put the part and then you put the base as the denominator and it's going to equal the percentage rate over a 100. Okay? And we use this model and put in the values we do know and then we solve for the missing number. So maybe one of these will be missing like the part's missing or maybe the base is missing or maybe the rate's missing. OK, but in a percent problem, one of these three will be missing and we need it set up like this to find it. OK, and we can cross multiply and divide by the third number and I'll show you. So nine is 25 percent of what number? So the nine is the part. It's going to go up here. We know the percentage. It's 25. But of what number? What's the base? And then we write it over this 25 over 100. So what we're going to do is cross multiply. We're going to do 9 times 100 and get 900. And then we're going to divide that 900 by the remaining third number, the 25. 900 divided by 25, real quick on our calculator, is a 36. We know what 36 goes here. This should be a 36. See? 9 is 25% of 36. See? All right? Let's try another one. Because what happens with these is they word them differently or another part is missing. So now here it said 9 is 25% of what number? Now it says 8 is what percent of 40? So now the percent's missing. Here's our part. Here's our base. Our percentage is missing over 100. So we do our cross multiplication. 8 times 100 is 800. And we divide it by the third number, 40. We get a 20. We add a percent sign to it. 8 is 20% of 40. So whatever the remaining number is, that's one that's going to be the divisor. So we cross multiply the two that we have 
whether it's these two or, you know, it could be these two because that one's missing. So you cross multiply the ones that are across from each other that are there and divide by the remaining one, okay? This one says, what number is 10% of 50? Now the green one's missing. Now the part's missing. So we've got these two that we can cross multiply. They're across from each other. And we do 50 times 10, which is 500. And we take that 500 and divide it by the last number that's there, the 100. And we get a 5. See? So 5 is 10% of 50. Let's try this one. Now it says what percent... So the percentage is missing, but look at the difference between what percent of 68 is 17 and 8 is what percent of 40. It's the same question, but worded differently. So don't let that catch you up. It still says percent, okay? So what percent, question mark where the percent should be, of 68, 68 is our whole number, our original number, is 17. So 17 is the part, okay? Which numbers can be cross-multiplied? The 17 times 100. That gives us 1,700. We can divide that by the third number that's left over, the 68, and we get a 25. So 25% 25 of 68 is 17. See? That's why it's so important to have this little setup, this little model, so that you could plug in, substitute in the correct numbers. Okay? Just remember you cross-multiply and then divide by whatever's remaining. All right? And if you cross multiplying this, you divide by the 100. Okay? Let's try a couple word problems. Tala spent $1,200 for one month of rent. This is 30% of her monthly income. How much does Tala make each month? So we can rewrite this to be simpler. We can rewrite it like these sentences, or we could just put it straight into the proportion. So I rewrote it to be simpler. It's 1,200 is 30% of what number? That's basically what that says. If it helps you to rewrite it as a sentence like this, then do it. We can write it as the proportion. 1,200 is the part. We don't know what the base is. We know that's her rent, but we don't know what her monthly income is, the big number. And we know it's 30% and it's over 100. So we can cross multiply the 1,200 times the 100 we get 120,000, okay? We can do my quick cheater way of 12 times 1 with four zeros. See? There's four zeros between these two numbers. So we get 12 with four zeros. So it's 120,000. Now, we cross-multiplied here. The number that was left over was the 30, wasn't it? So we do 120,000 divided by that 30, the third number, and we get 4,000. So we know she makes 4,000 per month. See? It's all a proportion. You cross multiply and divide by the number that's left over. Now this one's a little bit different and we're going to get into this more in lesson 12, but I thought I'd give you a little taste of it. Bob earned $15 per hour and was given a 3% cost of living raise. How much does he earn per hour now? So the original amount was $15, so that's going to be down here, okay? That's going to be our base. We know it's a 3% cost of living increase, and we know that's supposed to be written over 100. So the number that's missing is our part. We do our cross multiplication, the 15 times 3. We get 45, and the third number that's left over is the 100. So we actually have to divide 45 divided by 100, and that's going to give us a 0.45. Okay, so now we have a decimal point. Now, we're not done. That is a 0.45 that goes up here, but that's not how much he earns per hour now. That was his 3% increase. The 3% raise equals 45 cents. We need to add that to his original amount of $15 to know how much does he earn per hour now. So by adding the 45 cents to his original amount, we get $15.45. See that? So we weren't done. So it may trick you on the test and say one of the choice of the answers is a 0.45 when really the answer is $15.45 because you have to answer exactly what it's asking of you. It's asking how much does he earn per hour now. See? He makes $15.45.
Very, very important to answer what it's asking of you, okay? If you're ever in doubt, read the question again and then look at your answer to make sure you are actually answering what it's asking, all right? Should be ready to do that skill focus on page 137, all right? And we're going to be coming up on the calculators and percents soon in a couple lessons. Our next video is elements of a percent problem. I'm going to talk about that part and base and rate. And that's lesson 12A. It's a new lesson. And I'll have links to these previous videos to help you out, okay? All the 11 A, B, C, D, E, F videos and these grade 6 and algebra 1 videos, okay? And we're going to start getting into percentage increase and percentage decrease in lesson 12, all right? So you really need to understand this part of it before you move on to working with percentage increases and decreases, all right? So good luck on that skill focus, and I'll see you next video. Bye.